there, and welcome to this test taking tips video. In order to prepare for an exam related to education, it is imperative to study the subject matter and take practice tests. However, test taking strategies are just as important, and it is really valuable to think about some suggestions that can help you determine the most likely answer. We're going to tackle this subject in a few different sections. Keywords, passive versus active language, developmentally appropriate language, and critical thinking skills. Let's get started. One of the best test taking strategies you can implement is to identify the keywords. These are words you have seen on numerous occasions throughout your studies because they represent really important concepts. Keywords like these are excellent indicators of a correct answer since they help you to recognize what the test is asking for. This is specifically helpful when you are debating between two reasonable possibilities. Let's look at a few examples. Which of the following selections best specifies the benefits of using a variety of instructional strategies for classroom instruction? This question provides the test taker with a few reasonable options. Let's eliminate the answers that are clearly incorrect. First to go would be B, since while that is true, it does not support any educational idea. Similarly, C is also easily eliminated because even if it is true, it does not benefit the student, only the teacher. Looking at the two remaining responses, A and D, we can look for the keywords to help solidify the correct answer. The keywords here are learning styles. When you are teaching students with multiple learning styles, you are not only teaching to students who are visual learners, but also auditory learners, kinesthetic learners, and so on. In your role as an educator, you will need to implement this regularly in your classroom, so the examiners are looking for you to recognize this. Let's look at another example. Which of the following is the best reason for using technology in a lesson? There are many ways to use technology in a lesson, and although some of the responses may be accurate, they do not contain the key terms that the examiners are looking for. The key word here is accessible. Accessible means that students, regardless of their disability, should be able to obtain the information. Whenever you see this word, you should highly consider that the answer choice which contains it could be the correct response as one of the key components to special education is that it should be accessible to all. Here's another example. On the first day of school, a teacher asks her students to create a list of tasks they feel they do well. How can this activity help the teacher throughout the year? When faced with a question about assessment, it is helpful to go with the answer choice that is as detailed as possible. In this question asking about the value of an activity, there are two answers that include the word assess. However, one of them includes the key vocabulary word informally. To pick this response shows the examiner that you can elaborate on which kind of assessment is needed. Let's look at one more question. A team of teachers notice that one student seems to be continually falling behind their peers in most of their classes. Which of the following strategies should the teachers try first to help support this student and promote engagement in their classrooms? In spite of the fact that the student may require the things referenced in the response options, such as extra time or referrals for additional services, if we look for the keyword, only one answer includes it, differentiated instructional strategies. Differentiated instruction means tailoring the way you are teaching the information to meet individual needs. Picking this answer shows the examiner that you recognize that each student has their own unique needs and you are going to work hard to be able to meet them. Your study guides and practice tests will have many keywords to think through, and these will be the words you will find time and time again. In addition to the ones we just went over, multiple learning styles, accessibility, informal or formal assessments, and differentiated instruction, there are additional examples that you should look out for. These are words related to observation, modeling, rules and expectations, and most importantly, the word standards. If you see these words in one of the answer options, it is more than likely the correct answer. This is because the exam is looking for you to recognize and identify best practices. If implemented, these keywords have a positive impact on academic results and provide educators with plans of action that have been previously implemented. Another important strategy to look for when taking the exam is recognizing the difference between passive and active language. Answer choices which contain passive language are likely to indicate that a teacher is either not responding to the problem or is avoiding coming up with solutions to directly fix it. These types of answer choices can involve moving the child to a more restrictive situation to avoid the problem or referring the problem to a source outside of the classroom unnecessarily. These types of answer choices are generally incorrect. 
Another type of answer choice, which will often be incorrect, is one in which teachers solve an issue themselves rather than using the situation as a teaching opportunity to help students learn problem solving on their own. Answer choices containing active language, which indicate that the teacher is trying to solve the problem, are more likely to be correct. Let's look at an example. In her sociology unit on race and ethnicity, a teacher struggles to maintain respectful conversations among students regarding controversial subjects. Which of the following steps should she implement to address this problem? The first choice is a passive response, since the teacher would not actively engage in solving the problem, only the parents would. The second response is a passive one as well, referring the students to someone else. Again, what the test is looking for is that the teacher knows how to solve the problem. Using the third option to illustrate appropriate discussions is an active response, as the teacher is activating their thinking in order to grasp the importance of solving the problem critically. This is the correct answer. Let's look at another passive versus active question. A student with autism is nonverbal, but is in an inclusion classroom with a paraprofessional for support. The teacher is planning a group activity with students. What is an intervention that the teacher or paraprofessional could put into place to support this student? Choice B tells the student to listen to other students in his group, but tells him he does not have to participate, and C excuses him from the group activities. Both of these are passive solutions because they do not teach the student nor teach the class how to handle the problem. D is making a purposeful decision about how the student will be able to participate, so that would be the active response. Let's look at one more passive versus active problem. In a probability unit, a teacher assigns multiple word problems nightly for the student's homework. The students complain that the word problems are boring and they do not want to do them. What can the teacher do to help the students become more engaged in the probability unit? In this example, both A and C are passive responses, as they excuse the student from homework or ask other teachers to solve the problem. D is an active solution where the teacher would create new content in order to help her students. This answer is the most productive response. The next tip is to focus on the answer that is the most developmentally appropriate and allows for the most reasonable learning experience. Pedagogy and special education tests typically look for ways to ensure that the setup of the classroom you have created is age appropriate and allows for the best use of class time. Let's look at a few examples. A teacher has trouble getting students to refocus after lunch. What method should the teacher use to best correct this problem? Let's consider the most reasonable and developmentally appropriate response. Allowing the students 15 minutes to get back on task wastes valuable learning time. Punishing them by holding them after class or assigning detention would penalize them, which isn't effective and can be especially inappropriate depending on the age of the students. Those types of punishment also do not help them immediately get back on task. Reminding the students of the rules and expectations is the most reasonable and productive way to support your students. Here's another example. An 11th grade class has a requirement of a year-long project for successful completion of the course. Which of the following strategies would be best for the teacher to implement to ensure that students do not fall behind during the project? There are a number of ways to support students and help them to be successful on long-term projects, but when we try to consider how the teacher can make sure that they don't fall behind, we can eliminate some of the responses. Both B and D put too much of the responsibility on the student and allow for too much independence. C helps the students by teaching them good strategies, but won't help the teacher assess whether the students are far behind. A, establishing many deadlines, helps ensure that students are up to date in a developmentally appropriate way. Let's look at one more question. During classroom discussions, what is the best way to show that students' opinions and additions to the discussion are respected, appreciated, and important? Let's consider which of these answers is both the most reasonable as well as the most developmentally appropriate. If a teacher were to ask the entire classroom to respond, only one or two questions would be answered throughout the period. Likewise, in a public school class, requiring each student to speak twice would take a long time, as well as not consider the specific needs of individual students. While regularly encouraging students to elaborate is a great idea for teaching, specifying that the teacher would permit enough time to allow them to formulate ideas, as well as scaffold or support them when they are stuck, is the most developmentally appropriate option. In closing, let's discuss our final tip. Select the response that emphasizes critical thinking skills. Critical thinking refers to the process of thinking in a diligent and rational manner in order to make sense of the connections between ideas and facts. The process of thinking critically encompasses a variety of skills, including observation, analysis, interpretation, reflection, evaluation, inferencing, explanation, problem solving, and decision making. When faced with a question asking about an assignment or how to teach a topic, 
examiners are looking for teachers who engage their students beyond rote memorization. Let's look at a few examples. A 10th grade teacher wants to assign a writing assignment to her class that has a real-world connection. Which of the following writing activities should she assign? Each of these options is a reasonable assignment and is productive in some manner, but only one of the answers requires students not only to describe a topic, but also to reflect on it and evaluate why they would like it to be taught. The correct answer is B. Let's try one more to see which emphasizes critical thinking. An economics teacher assigns students a section to read in the textbook over types of unemployment. Which of the following extension activities could this teacher assign to their students after the reading that would involve the highest level of mastery for the students? The first three options would show that the students have a basic understanding of the subject matter and are strong on vocabulary. But only one answer, D, asks students to compare and contrast, therefore showing a deeper knowledge on the topic, as well as the ability to use this information to make connections. Taking a test can be stressful for anyone. By considering these four tips, looking for keywords, choosing an active instead of a passive response, considering a developmentally appropriate activity, and selecting the answer that promotes critical thinking, you can identify which response is the correct one, putting you on the right path to a successful exam. I hope you have enjoyed this video and happy test taking.